In this video, we're going to cover what's unique about psychodynamic techniques in general, and you know, comparing them a little bit to CBT and, and, and behavioral approaches. I think the, the biggest difference between these, these three approaches is you know, CBT and behavioral approaches, the cognitive approach is emphasizing how a person thinks. Um, their thought processes and how their behaviors and feelings come out of the thoughts they have. Behavioral approaches are focusing on actions and trying to build more effective ways of living with a person. But these two approaches are highly uh, regimented. You know, there are specific techniques that if you do this, you will have a result. Uh, something as simple as you know, raising awareness of a person's thinking, well, you use the downward descent technique and keep trying to ask what's a further explanation of that thought, what's a further explanation of that thought, until ultimately you arrive at a more basic belief. Um, a behavioral approach is very regimented, setting up, setting up contingency protocols, uh, figuring out what sort of positive reinforcement is useful, what's not, how to bring that into the reality of a client and maintain positive reinforcement. You know, those sort of things, again, you, you have spelled out exactly what you need to do and you're more using psychoeducation to help a client through the problems they're having. And those work. Those are important. There's, there's nothing wrong with that approach whatsoever. For some clients, they might not prefer that. And some personalities, might not be as effective in. You know, research now is starting to discover that temperament of the client in many ways, to a, to a pretty fair extent, is a, is a determining factor in what techniques are useful for you, the clinician, to use. What sets psychodynamic techniques apart is that they're more process-oriented. It's very hard to manualize exactly what to specifically do in a psychodynamic context. Now these videos are, are kind of trying to do that, trying to spell those things out, but ultimately it's not going to be as clean as opening up a CBT manual, reading a text, there's, there's, there's an actual, there's an actual, uh, you know, like I said, a text to read. You just do what's on the paper and magic results. Psychodynamic approaches are not like that. I think it would probably be more fair to describe, to compare the psychodynamic approach more to mindfulness. That ultimately, you as the clinician, you're trying to maintain awareness of feelings the client is having. And you're blocking defenses. Now, that, that's probably as, as, as specific a protocol I can, I, can, I can offer in this general sense. And you know, in other videos, we're going to get into specifically you know, how to analyze. There, there are different uh, uh, guidelines of how to do that. And so I'm, I'm not trying to say that the psychodynamic approach is, is, is more loose. It definitely isn't. It also is regimented, but a different way. It's trying to, main, it's trying to maintain and, and create a process as opposed to teaching your client something. So there, there, there are really four steps in this mindfulness that any psychodynamic technique is going to have and needs to have in order for it to work. The first is, is enabling the client to pay attention to their feelings. A lot of times clients will be coming in and they really have no sense of having any feelings at all. How are you doing? I'm fine. What happened in your week? Nothing. There needs to be a development of noticing and, and, and defining what that is. The second step is going to be labeling feelings. Once you have a client starting to recognize something's happening, you know, whatever they're experiencing now inside is not the same as it was five minutes ago or 10 minutes ago or yesterday. Now you start getting more sophisticated and you're labeling feelings. You can check out my other videos on the six universal feelings people have. Now, that's not an exhaustive list because people also have social feelings, and that's in a separate video. The next step is getting the client to experience the feeling. What does the feeling feel like in their body? Where is the tension? What's the breathing like? 
Can they, can they feel their heart rate rising? Do they have a headache? Do they feel nauseous? This is what clients are trying to avoid, and this is going to be the step where defenses are going to probably be most powerful. They definitely can come up with labeling. They definitely can come up with noticing, but he, this, this ultimately, it's that this stage of feeling the painful feeling is what defenses are all about, trying to not experience those. I almost, I almost kind of think of challenging defenses as being being akin, you know, for, for all those clinicians out there with, with a DBT background, you don't want your client cutting. Cutting is a nasty, in many ways it's a habit, it's a nasty habit. It's an addictive behavior. Most people who cut don't want to kill themselves, but ultimately they are running a high risk of doing so because... Like I said, it's an addictive behavior, and people develop a tolerance to the, yes, positive results, the, 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 the chemical rush in the body that covers over emotional pain. So you want to block that. You wouldn't, you wouldn't allow a client to continue that behavior, and, and you would do your best to stop that behavior when it's occurring. And you can check out my DBT courses to get a better picture of what that would look like in that therapeutic tradition. But the idea here is the same. Just as you wouldn't allow someone sitting in your office to cut themselves, well, you don't want to allow your client to cut themselves with their defenses, which is ultimately causing them the extreme anxiety and the cycle of pain that they're going through. So experiencing the feeling, whatever that's going to be, Challenging those defenses. And the fourth and final step is also a, a helping and allowing and enabling your, your client to experience what actions they feel an urge to do. Here again, defenses are going to come up. Say that, that you know, husband's cheating on his wife. Well, that wife might have this defense of, of, of being in denial because she's afraid of what she might do clocking that guy up the head with the with the with the with the vase you know screaming profanities there's something there that the client just it's unthinkable for them to do and it's that unthinkable staying in that unthinkable that's maintaining that pain so those are the four basic uh, basic uh, markers in any psychodynamic tradition. And as we're going through in this video series, you're going to always have to maintain an awareness of where are you in this process? Are we noticing? Are we labeling? Are we experiencing? And then every step of the way, you're going to have to be very, uh, very clear and not, not harsh. And, and, you know, you don't want to rub your, your, your client's nose in their defenses, but putting on the table unambiguously, there is such a thing as defenses. These things are getting in the way of your life. They are maintaining the pain. And I'm going to be pointing them out to you because I love you, because I care about you, because I want the best for you. And I think, you know, kind of, again, kind of summing up the difference between, uh, you know, CBT behavioral approaches and the psychodynamic traditions is that commitment to love. You know, Carl Jung, in his writings, you know, numerous places, makes it clear that that is, is a, one of the few primary ingredients that makes therapy different than normal day-to-day uh, -day experiences, is that sense of, of, of wanting the best, you, you as the clinician yearning for the best for this client, and that you're willing to put yourself in harm's way to be attacked by them, you know, in their defenses, that they might have to try and maintain this, this pattern of suffering to open your heart and feel their pain and, and, and walk with them on this journey of life that they're in. But you're walking with them as a guide. You're walking with them mindfully in order so that they can be in that life that you see all this potential in. 
If you like this video, go ahead and give it a like. You can share it with your friends. If you want to leave a comment in the comment box, that's where to do it. Or you can check out my email and, and shoot me a message that way. And if you like these videos, you can also support me on Patreon. I'll see you in the next video.